more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Yo, top billing to ya. I top billing. Your boy is geeked up here. The underground king back on my college football drone. And early signing period, man. It has come and gone for the most part. Obviously, kids can still sign. And we're going to have that late signing period as well. So it should be cool in the game. But, man, there are some heavy hitters out there doing some massive things. The usual suspects are there like Alabama and Georgia. But Texas A&M, what the hell? Texas A&M, to me, looking like a future conglomerate. No doubt about that. You guys know my love for one Jimbo Fisher. With Coach Beamer gone, Urban Meyer somewhere checking women's oil, <laughs> changing oil on women and stuff like that. You know Jimbo Fisher is my guy, probably my number one favorite coach. I love listening to Jimbo talk about football and his ability. Like I always say this, Jimbo Fisher could be the number one defensive coordinator if he wanted to. If you ever heard this guy talk about defensive schemes and concepts, man, the way he's able to rattle it off, we know he's got that slick accent and he talks all fast, but he's just a football god in my opinion as far as the nuances of the sport goes. We know he can recruit his ass off. He always assembles the best staffs out there. It's just about putting it together all on the field. A little bit of a disappointing season to me from Texas and him. I was expecting them to perhaps be in the playoffs. They weren't that far away from being in the playoffs. Obviously, the only team to beat Alabama, and it's just going to get better from there. The type of resources that he has at Texas and him, oh, even better than Florida State. Think about that. This shit is setting up even better than Florida State. Only thing about that is he's in a crazy ass division in a tough ass conference. And I don't know. I'm not sure it's going to matter, right? He's looking very much like what Alabama looked like. What looks like, right? Alabama not going anywhere. Alabama probably going to be even better next year. I expect Texas A&M to be even better next year, especially. With this addition, it made me have to crank up my camera. I saw that shit come across the wire, and I'm like, what? Max Johnson, right? Max Johnson, if you've been on the channel before, you see me do film studies on Max Johnson. I really love his talent. Big lefty kid, great athlete. They weren't really using his athletic ability that much with LSU this year from the little that I watched. I can't sit here in front and say that I watched LSU like I used to when I covered LSU, but from the little bit that I did watch and some of the games that I've seen, he had some very good games. He had some very poor games. He had some games where it left a lot to be desired, and that's across the board from their whole team. I think the offensive line performed a little uh, – some injuries, some big-time injuries as well for LSU. Could have been better, but if you look at it, that man still put together a pretty damn good statistical season, and it can only get better with the type of talent that they have at Texas A&M. Them boys is loaded, and then they keep being loaded, man. What? Look at this right here. So with Texas A&M, you have to love Texas A&M's defensive front. DeMarvin Leal, uh, the Clemens kid, I believe both of those guys. I know Leal's gone. I believe both of those guys will be gone. A lot of talent amongst that front and some of these guys are leaving i'm like man they have anybody who can step up immediately they had already been recruiting pretty well on the defensive line so you're just gonna have guys rotate up but this cat right here walter nolan man i had to check in on this cat this cat is incredible this is exactly the type of plug and play cat you will put in in place of a demarvin leal a guy who's obviously going to work more of the interior portion of that defense we'll see what the defense is like right no mike elko there i would suspect that they would still run a very similar scheme but Walter Nolan's talented enough to play all up and down the guitar string from a shade all the way to a five technique and then man they got this cat this Evan Stewart cat <sighs> come on man they just keep doing it look at this man the number one ranked recruiting class in the country Jimbo Fisher and to think these crazy ass FSU fans were killing Jimbo Fisher right that's what fans are going to do anyway but we can definitely see that Jimbo Fisher is that dude by how FSU is now and how Texas A&M while it not being shown on the field uh, especially this particular season there but how they could eventually do in the future there and it starts up front with recruiting but man they got a five star QB right here this Connor Weidman kid however you would say his name this cat is a hellified athlete. I like this kid a lot. 
I think him and Max Johnson make very much a lot of sense as they have very similar styles as far as the athleticism goes. I don't know what happens with the Haynes King kid. Uh, this cat, Texas cat, and everything like that. I don't, I don't know what the plan will be. There's only one football, right? I would think a guy like Max Johnson, right? Check this out. What complicates matters for me is that Haynes King and Max Johnson came in the same exact class, same exact recruiting cycle. Max Johnson has a ton more experience though now, a season and a half worth of playing experience, 523 attempts now to his credit. A 59.8% completion percentage. I would like to see him at 65%. And Jimbo Fisher is the guy who can do that. He gradually increased or he helped out with Kellen Mond's innate accuracy, in my opinion, over those, I believe, three seasons that he had Kellen Mond. You can just see him getting at more accurate. And the talent around him got better as well. So that's always a factoring process or a – uh, an aspect that people overlook, the talent around you. Now, LSU was loaded, but this season he could have probably been a little bit better if he didn't have some of those injuries. So he's playing with some guys with a lot of inexperience themselves as long as well as him not being that experienced as well. But 35 touchdowns and seven interceptions, you can't front on that. 35 and seven so far in his career. I would think he would be the clubhouse leader. But Haynes King, man, I remember him coming up out of high school very – Lively arm, one of those cats that is a pretty good athlete in his own right, right? So I remember watching him play, I think it was like Kent State or something like that. So he hadn't really played against anyone in college, and he has three touchdowns and four interceptions. Only 39 total attempts. So ain't nothing to it but to do it. That could change very much next season. But then you got that Connor Weichman kid as well. I don't know what Jimbo's doing, but he's stacking it up, man, and that shit looks crazy to me. Look at your man Max Johnson here. I love Max's ability to attack the middle of the field. I think he has very good arm strength. And when he's on his game, as far as the mechanics go, he can be extremely accurate. You'll see him hit this deep curl right here to Jare Jenkins. Looks like Alabama was either in their quarter-quarter half coverage or they were playing man on skill and a Tampa 2 aspect of it. You'll see the, the uh, third level here, bow out into a two deep shell here you'll get a deep zone drop in the middle of the field here by the I want to say that's actually the dime back so they're in their fabricated pressure schemes there and you can see right here Max Johnson can put lead on targets boy look at this Shoot! man <laughs> come on that bad boy was on a rope too these are the kind of throws that I look for everybody wants to push the ball down the field vertically uh thinking that 50 60 yard passes in the air where you can use all your body english and everything like that it's throws like this where you have to be accurate be able to step into the throw look at that he was barely able to step in through this bad boy right here but he's got that over the top delivery here look almost like a fadeaway jumper but he still had the arm strength look at that look at that bad boy humming right mm, look at the product placement that's nasty that's a nasty throw right there same kind of deal right here. You want to roll coverage? I believe they have Malachi Moore here. Uh, damn near rolling to the post there. You're going to have Trey Palmer here. Same thing, kind of on a deep curl there. And his pre-snap recognition and understand if he sees the back of a defender, exactly where to put it off and where the wide receiver will snap off his route. That's something right there that's just going to come with experience. And he has that already for Texas a and right there. Front-facing play-action fake. Boom, don't roll coverage and don't play coverage across the board or have your man playing severe man where they're turning their backs there because he's going to find the, find the guy right there, right? So deep curl here to Trey Palmer. Let's look at the mechanics of it with Max, though. It's something I want to see him improve on. And when I used to see it, when I was watching it this year, something that, I don't know, you see him right here? He's stepping away from the target. So this is what Jimbo is known for. He's known for mechanically working with people. Jameis Winston, he would have that man on point with his. But look at him stepping away from the target, kind of like a fallaway jumper right here. Hard to be extremely accurate or consistently accurate uh, with faulty mechanics like that. But he's got good arm talent. He's able to I mean, pretty much put the lead on target right there. And Trey Palmer get himself a nice gainer afterwards as well. 
all right, I'm going to have to cut it right there. This is starting to be a film study, and I wasn't trying to do that at all. I just wanted to brag on my man Jimbo in the direction of his Aggies program. I expect big things in the future from Jimbo Fisher, and it's going to be tough to do, but he's stacking up the players, and uh, they have that moving in the right direction, in my opinion. I also wanted to get this cat Pete O'Neill off my back. He's been here like four years. <laughs> I don't cover the Aggies, but he's always on my stuff talking about the Aggies and wanting me to cover the Aggies. So here you go. Your one lone content item for the Aggies. If you didn't watch to the end and see this shout out right here, man, slap yourself. And don't come back up on my channel because you are mad annoying and you've been annoying me forever. All right? But salute to you, man. And salute to all those Aggie players out there. Big things to come. All right? But it's your boy, Murph the Underground King. Um, if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. Like 70% of the people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So stop lurking. Make sure you subscribe and make sure your voice is heard. Only if you're a real football head, though. And salute to everybody out there who sends in that quality support as well. That's much needed and much appreciated. All right? It's your boy, Murphy, Underground King, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.